Brothers and sisters in Islam, after a few days, Ramadan will be bidding us farewell. Although it will soon leave us, the lessons that we will have learned from it will stay on. So the khutbah of today will concentrate on the levels of fasting and how they are related with taqwa and what we should do during these last 10 days of Ramadan. I hope time will permit me to deliver. First of all, brothers and sisters in Islam, fasting is divided into three categories, or I could say it has three levels. The basic level is to avoid drinks, food, smoking, and conjugal rights from dawn to sunset for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in al-hadith al-Qudsi, يَتْرُكُ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ وَشَهَوَتَهُ مِنْ أَجْلِ Describing a fasting person, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he abandons his food, drinks, and enjoying conjugal rights with his spouse for my sake, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's fasting for my sake, and I am the one who will pay him for that. I'm the one who will reward him for that. So this is the basic level. But even a higher level than that is to make sure that the bo your body parts do not commit any sin. عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال إذا صمت فليصم سمعك وبصرك ولسانك عن الكذب والمحارم ولا تجعل يوم صومك ويوم فطرك سواء جابر بن عبد الله one of the bona fide companions of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم says when you are fasting make sure that you don't lie that you don't cheat all your body parts should not commit any sin so this is the pure meaning of fasting to avoid committing sins not only when you are fasting even after you finish fasting so even the highest level of fasting is sawmul qalbi anil himam ad-dani'a wal afkar al-mub'ida anillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala to make sure that you abandon and abstain from all inferior and lowly motives and thoughts that will keep you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any thoughts that keep you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abandon them throw them away make sure that whatever you do you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brothers and sisters in Islam Umar ibn al-Khattab influenced a lot of people many people liked his personality the king of Azerbaijan after hearing about the justice of Umar he decided to send an emissary to come and meet with this Muslim leader who was so just everyone during his time was talking about him how he was fair and how he was God fearing how he was fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the king of Azerbaijan sends an emissary to come and meet with Umar ibn so they discuss, they, um, they talk about different issues, and it's time for lunch. So Umar ibn al-Khattab gave him an alternative. He told him, if you want to have lunch with me, you are free. And if you want to have lunch with the poorest people in my community, you are free to do that. So this emissary was surprised. How come, according to protocol, if I am your visitor, I have to eat with you? So how come he is giving me an alternative? alternative to eat with the poorest people. So the emissary said, I will have lunch with you. He decided to have lunch with Umar, assuming that Umar will be uh, feasting on a sumptuous meal. So he was shocked to find that Umar was eating bread and salt salt in water, soaking the bread in salt, and after eating that food, Umar would say, Alhamdulillah. He would thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of this food that Allah has given him. Many people, if they are not rich enough, if they don't get a good meal that they aspire for, they would, instead of thanking Allah, they would complain about their pathetic situation. So Umar was teaching us a lesson here that everything we do should be for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should use the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek his pleasure. So Umar took this emissary from Azerbaijan to go and see what the food of the poor people was. 
they were eating good food according to the standards of that time. It was the best food that any person could ever eat. So the emissary was surprised. This is the, the leader of Muslims and he is eating bread and salt, yet the poorest people are eating better food than him. Omar wanted to teach him a lesson that whatever blessings you have, you have to use them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve humanity whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And this is the highest level of fasting to use the blessings, the skills that you have to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to satisfy your ego. We are here as visitors. So time will come when we will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask us for whatever he gave us. Thumma la tusalunna yawma idhin anin na'im. On that day, you will be questioned about the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So how is it related with taqwa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyam, kama kutiba ala ladhina min qabilikum, la'allakum tattaqun. Oh, you who believe, fasting has been prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you so that you should learn taqwa. Sometimes we translate it piety, God consciousness, it's more than that. Taqwa comes from al-wiqaya. You are shielding yourself from the wrath and punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are protecting yourself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing what he wants and avoiding what he doesn't want. This is taqwa. Now scholars of tafsir say that when taqwa and bir come together in one ayah, then taqwa means to do good deeds that will bring you closer to, uh, means to avoid bad deeds that will bring you punishment of Allah and birr means to do good deeds that will bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَتَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Help one another in doing good deeds and piety. In other words, doing good deeds and avoiding evil and do not help one another in committing sins and aggression. So they say when the word taqwa and bir come together in one ayah, then taqwa means avoiding doing bad deeds that will bring you the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, you are protecting, you are shielding yourself from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And al bir means doing good deeds that will bring you pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these, level, these three levels of fasting, they come into play here because at one hand you are trying your best to maximize your efforts in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially during this auspicious time during these auspicious days of Ramadan as well as avoiding evil so if for example Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam tells you that when you are fasting you should not cheat you should not lie it doesn't mean that after breaking the fast you should cheat and lie this is a lesson that you should continue Continuously avoid cheating and lying. Your, your body parts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you should be used in a proper way in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Al-Imam Ibn Taymiyyah was asked about um, comparison between the first 10 days and nights of Dhul Hijjah and the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan. Because there is a hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam in which he says, there is no any time where you can, go, you can do good deeds which will be more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than doing them during the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And Aisha radiallahu anha tells us that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam during the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan, he would do more good deeds and he would be more more generous and he would maximize, maximize his efforts. So Ibn Taymiyyah was asked, which ones are better? The first 10 days and nights of Dhul Hijjah or the last 10 days and nights of Ramadan? Ibn Taymiyyah answered like this. He said, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than the first 10 days, uh, are better than the last 10 days of Ramadan because during the last 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, there is Yawm Arafah the day of Arafah. If you are not performing Hajj, if you fast on that day, you are forgiven the sins of two years, except major sins. So this, because of this day, the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah are better than the last 10 days of Ramadan. 
Whereas the last 10 nights of Ramadan are better than the first 10 nights of Dhul Hijjah because of Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfis alfi shahr. So it's clear over here. Now, we go back to the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas says, Kana Rasulu sallallahu alayhi wa sallama ajwada nas, wa kana ajwada ma yakunu fi Ramadan, hina yalqahu Jibreel, wa kana Jibreelu alayhi salam yalqahu fi kulli laylatin min Ramadan, fayudarisuhu al-Qur'an al-Kareem. Fala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama hina yalqahu Jibreel, ajwada bil khayri min al-rih al-mursala. Ibn Abbas says that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous person on the face of the earth. Now when we talk about generosity, people think that it's only generosity in terms of giving money to the poor people. Not only that, generosity means giving charity to the poor people, giving gifts even to the rich people. If you have a friend who is a rich person and you want your friendship to continue, you know he likes books, particular books, and you travel where you have access to those books, buy them, give them to him. Gifts are very meritorious in Islam. So give it, being generous means to be generous to the poor as well as the rich person. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Tahadaw tahabu. Continue giving gifts to one another. These gifts will make you love one another. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the, most, was the most generous person in terms of giving charity and in terms of doing good deeds. If you are driving from Fahahil to Kuwait City and you find someone on a bus stop in this baking school coaching son, give him a ride. This is charity. You are being generous. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you, especially during this time of Ramadan. If someone is lost and he's asking you for directions and you know it's too hot outside, if you don't know the directions, don't give him wrong directions. If you have time, escort him to where he is going. People unfortunately have the tendency, they don't know where you are asking to go, but still they would give you directions and you will end up getting lost. So there is generosity in, in terms of giving charity, generosity of doing good work, good deeds that will benefit humanity, and also generosity with your position. If you are in a high position, you know that this person is skilled. If, we, if he gets employed, he will benefit the Ummah help him to get the position for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the most generous person in all aspects, giving gifts, uh, helping people. Uh, sometimes, according to a hadith, a poor lady would come to him and she would ask him to help her and he would walk with her until he, uh, until he finished her, her needs, then he would, he would go back home. How many of us do that, this today? Especially during this time, during these last 10 days of Ramadan. Aisha رضي الله عنها says كان الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد في العشر الأواخر من رمضان ما لا يجتهد في غيره Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم would exert more efforts during this time more than any other time so this is the time that we have to be generous with our time generous with our skills generous with the money in all aspects and the uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas continues he was more generous especially when Jibril came to him and Jibril would come to him during Ramadan every night to read the Quran with him. So Jibril would read the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would read after him so that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would easily memorize it, understand it, its lessons and then implement them. So Ibn Abbas says that after Jibril came to him, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was very very quick in doing good deeds than a wind. Imagine how fast the wind goes. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was faster than that in doing good deeds. It's figurative of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, exerting more efforts in doing good deeds. Brothers and sisters in Islam, it was narrated by Abdullah ibn Salam, radiallahu anhu qala, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyuhan nas, afshu salam, wa at'imu ta'am, wa silu al-arham, wa sallu bil-layli wa nasu niyam, تَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ بِسَلَامٌ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as soon as he arrived in Medina, when people were converging to see him, 
he gave them instructions. He said, O oh, ye people, Muslim and non-Muslim alike, Afshu salam, spread peace. Now, our salutation, assalamu alaikum, it's not only a greeting, it's more than that, it's dua. When you meet with your Muslim brother and you greet him, assalamu alaikum, you are praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make him peaceful. So how will this person be peaceful yet in your heart you have grudges against him? So before saying salam to your brother, make sure you clean your heart from jealousy and rancor. Don't have any, don't hold any grudges with him because you are praying for him to have peace.